Hi, I'm Josh Cooper, co-founder and CEO of CN Seamless, and today we're going to be showing you how to set up your Mach 1 base machine and hook it up to your plasma cutter. First thing you're going to want to do is take out your base machine here and set it down on your material. You're going to want to plug it into your 120 volt outlet and that's going to power up your machine so that you can turn on the electromagnet using this button on the back. When it's on, it's going to be rigidly attached to the metal. The next thing we're going to want to do for the plasma cutting attachment is install the plasma module, which includes the plasma arm we're going to put on right here and then we're going to put on our plasma module and sliding it onto the back of the machine and flicking that cam lock down to lock it into place. Connecting your plasma cutter to your machine you have two cords that you're going to want to connect. You've got this cord that's going to connect to the CPC port of your plasma cutter and to the module on your Mach 1 machine. And this other cable here can connect to your module and the end of your cutting torch to enable ohmic probing, which means as the material is touching the tip of the plasma torch, it's gonna know how high off the material your plasma cutter is. So here's the Hypertherm 45 XP plasma cutter. This is one of our recommended cutters that's gonna connect to your machine very easily. You've got on the front, your power, your settings, where you put your grounding clamp and your torch, and then on the back is where you have your CPC port, which is what you're gonna use to connect your module to your cutter. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to plug in the one end of our CNC seamless cable into the CPC port of your plasma cutter. And the next thing you're going to want to do is plug the other end of that cable onto your plasma module, as you can see here, basically just connecting that to your plasma cutting module for the CNC seamless machine. And you can tighten down these DB9 screws if you'd like. And you slide that back on. The next thing you're going to want to do is connect your plasma torch to the plasma cutter. You've got one end of your torch, this is gonna do the actual cutting, and the other end is what you plug into your plasma cutter. And it might already be plugged in. So you just pop that in here, until you hear the snap. And then for connecting the other end, you put the machine torch into your base arm. You can untighten this little clamp nut here until you get about the right size diameter. You push it into your recommended height, and then you flick this cam lock down to lock it into place so that as you move that arm around, you can move the torch. As I said, there's ohmic probing capabilities with the Mach 1, and that's what this cable is for. So you can connect your one end of your ohmic sensing cable to the plasma module with the SMA connector here, and the other end of that cable is gonna connect to the ohmic ring on your plasma torch. So as you see here, I just popped that on, and now I've got a good connection, closing the loop between our plasma cutter and the end of this torch so it knows how high it is off the material. So we've got these handy cable management straps on the base machine that lets you tie down all your loose cables so that they're controlled during operation and you know where they are. We're just gonna go ahead and put these cables here and then tighten down this little strap just by pulling it over that little knob there so that as you move this arm around, you can make sure that your cables are out of way from the material you're trying to cut. You've also got your grounding clamp here, which you're gonna connect to the front of the machine just by putting it in, turning it, and then you're gonna to wanna to use the end of the clamp and connect it directly to whatever material you're trying to cut so it has a great grounding loop to ensure your plasma cutter works properly. So every plasma cutter requires some sort of air supply to operate effectively. You're gonna to wanna to connect that to the back of your machine. And then finally, you're gonna to wanna to turn on your plasma cutter after connecting it to a 240 volt or whatever voltage power supply. Essentially, you wanna do this step last. You don't wanna be plugging in cables and everything and trying to mess with all the outlets while this is turned on. That's just best practice. After you've got that all set up, we're gonna connect the software simply by clicking Wi-Fi, connecting to the Wi-Fi that's hosted by your base machine, and then clicking refresh on the page, which is gonna allow your machine to connect and be controlled by the tablet. And with that, that's your entire plasma setup. We're gonna go ahead and get cutting. 